Today's interview is with Mr. Jack Squire. The date is October 21st, 2008. We're interviewing him at his home in McMinnville. Says he's lived here for what, since 1942? April 42, we got down, got up here. Um, he lives at, uh, was it 750? 350. 350 Northwest 7th. Okay. And um, how long have you been at this address? Pardon? How long have you been at this address? How long have you lived here in this house? We bought this house in 72. Okay. It was built in 1950. Uh huh. All right. Um, and you. Uh, were born somewhere else, so obviously uh, we don't know whether your childhood home is still standing or not, because that was somewhere else. Where was that? Southern California. Okay. Uh, we lived in a lot of different houses down there. <laughs> yeah, they probably don't even have your house standing any long. No, not the ones I lived in at all, I did. Okay. So, when you came here in 42, um, how old were you? 17. So you had just graduated from high school? There was school. Really? Well, tell me about that. Huh? Tell me about that. I went to work as an apprentice carpenter when I was 14. All right. So I never went back to school. And that was down in California? Oh, yeah. And you, uh, how long before you became a journeyman? I never was a journeyman. Oh. It's just uh, per se because you, you got to be in the union to be a journeyman. I just uh, built houses for a few years. I built a few houses down there before I came up here. Now, okay, let's see if I can get this straight. Now, you came up here in 42. Yeah. And you were 17 when you got yeah, here. Yeah. So you'd already worked on some houses, a number of houses, before you ever left the state down there then. I built some houses completely by myself. Seriously? The first one when I was 15. But I've been working for this uh, old German carpenter, and uh, my dad says, You know enough to build a house? And I said, Yeah, I think so. <laughs> And uh, so he went down the road there from the, we lived in a big old rental house there out in the San Fernando Valley and built a, uh, bought an acre for $200 and uh, I built a house on there. Oh it wasn't much of a house. You wouldn't consider it a house today, hardly. Well, it went pretty easy, just a three room thing. I don't know how he figured we were going to live in it, but uh, it was five of us kids. And uh, So you built a house that you moved into as a family then? Yeah, exactly. and then before we got moved in, he said, boy, that went good, let's put a lean-to on the back. So we put a <laughs> lean-to on the back and three more rooms in that, in the bathroom, indoor bathroom. And uh, then I got done uh, doing that, and this uh, neighbor guy that I'd, was work I'd worked for before, as a he had a garbage route, uh, refuse stuff he picked up. So he was uh, picking up these old crates from... Lockheed, there. No, I don't know if it's Lockheed. There. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Some of them company there in Burbank, uh, and it had some beautiful uh, lumber on uh, that the uh, propellers had come from back east. Oh. And these propellers, the three bladed thing, it was for a for P 38 propeller. Right. So he'd bring them home, and he got paid for hauling them off. He'd bring them home and throw them on the ground there, and he bought an acre next to us. And uh, I'd tear, tear them apart and pull the nails out, and so I built him a little house. Built him out of little packing crates. Yeah, it was, it was real nice, one by six pine. And uh, the whole dang house was built out of that. The outside siding was, there was no rain down there, so we didn't have to worry much about that. Yeah, I must have got some two before somewhere, but I don't remember that. And where was that? What city? Or near? That was in Van Nuys, California. Is that right? At that time. $200 for an acre. Yeah. Um, yeah, then when we got ready to move up here, that was about 19, uh, let's see, I was 15, I don't know, I was 14 when I went to work, that uh, old German guy, worked for him about a year, oh, before that I worked for a shingle contract, learned how to put shingles on, uh, anyway, uh, then I, I got done with that one, I lived, where I lived was right in a group of the, of the uh, movie movie people extras. Mm -hmm. They all had little they had little acres out there, and they had their horses out there, and and uh, uh, this, you know when they get, they needed a bunch of guys with horses and stuff. They mm -hmm. made lots of western. Mm -hmm. They'd get all these guys come in there, and 
I remember the guy, the guys next door, was uh, I was just a kid at the time. You were, yes. And uh, and the, my dad bought us some ponies. He'd go down in the stockyards in Los Angeles and get them for two cents a pound. They bring them in their little Mustangs for for dog food. They go for about two cents a pound. Well, he was a horseman from the time he was a little kid, and uh, uh, he loved horses. And uh, so he'd bring get those ponies in there. They'd never had a rope on them before, and he'd give them to us kids. And he says, "Here, you know, calm them down, pet them down, teach them, <laughs> teach them to ride, and so all you that." Had to there. break a horse without knowing anything about it yet, huh? Well, he was there helping us a little bit when he came home from work, and he always had a pretty good job all the way through. The depression days in the 30s. So you were fortunate in that way, huh? You were fortunate. Yes. Yeah. We we did okay. Uh, we always had food to eat, but we always had a little. We lived on a little farm out there in the valley ever since we moved out there. So we always always had eggs and and cow and stuff like that. So we didn't we didn't lack food. Mm. And uh, it was tough times. When you came up here, then you, where did you live when you arrived here? We uh, we weren't headed here. We were headed for. He'd always dreamed about going to uh, to uh, Grand Coulee when they built that Grand Coulee Dam. He'd read about it all the time. And when it got almost done, or I guess it was done when we headed up here. Why well, he was always dreamed about going up there and homesteading 160 acres. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was 320. Anyway, uh, we didn't. And in the meantime, he had a cousin that moved over here from uh, Idaho. And bought a farm at Amity, 100 and some acres right at the edge of Amity, and they got the correspondent back and forth. So uh, we we turned over and come over on the. I don't know who who made the decision to come over here on this highway or something. I don't know. And uh, on you know Highway 99W was uh, mm -hmm. not the main route at the time. I guess it was, there were two of them, but uh, we we turned down there at Junction City and. Came up here and uh, stopped and visited him. Well, <laughs> we didn't get any farther because he he saw me and all the boys was gone, you know. And uh, so he talked him in, talked the old man into staying here for a while, let me live with him that summer and and work. And he found a place over in Fall City to rent, with just a little shack on it where my f rest of the family lived. And he said, "You you have Jack work for me." And you come over and help me when you can, when we need this and that, and, and I'll uh, I'll help you, and I'll loan you the mach my machinery to to farm that place over there. So he did, and we did. <laughs> That's where we spent the summer, and then that fall, uh, we found a place up on the about five miles out here on Peavine Road. To uh, actually he took a a le uh, kind of a lease option to buy it on there. For uh, I think it was 320 acres, and uh, we we're going to buy it for $7,500. And uh, well, we didn't have money. We sold that house. I remember my dad sold that house that I built down there for $2,800, or that's that's the total amount of money he had when we came up here. Uh, but that was a lot of fairly a lot of money, I thought, you know. Yes, it was. And uh, it wouldn't be about what you'd take on a little vacation now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, where was I? Okay, we moved up on Peavine and lived there for uh, well till I went in the service. Uh, oh, then the old man let the uh, the guy, the manager of Penny of Penny's store down here, uh, come out there and talk to my dad into to giving him that option because he wanted to move out in the country. So uh, he said, "Okay." He said, "If you you give me the option on this house, I want I'll have Jack remodel that house, and then uh, and I'll pay him, and you can move over, and I'll buy the place behind you there for 300 some acres. It's got a, a house on it and a nice barn, a lot better better place than we were living. Although we were living in a nice that barn still standing, that house still standing up there that I lived in anyway that we lived in." Do you and, know the name uh, of the place or how to identify it now? If we, the Washington Roofing owns it now. Out there on Peavine? Yeah. Okay. I don't remember the address or anything. Yeah. Okay. 
but I know that the roofing, Wuxing Roofing built a Harold built a nice house, and uh, his brother-in-law or something like that, I think, it moved in the old house we lived in. Okay. And uh, I hadn't changed that any. The old barn still stand the last time I was up there. Anyway, uh, he's all by that, and then the, this friend of mine owns a 320-acre place down here uh, that he got from an estate on an attorney, local attorney. He says uh, he'll rent you that, and I'll rent you this whole place, three, uh, over a thousand acres. With, you know, to my dad, that oh man, he had two boys. I had, a, I got a brother four years younger than me, and uh, he would be in, unless he'd be about 13 or 14. What and, a gift! Uh, we started running cattle up there, you know, a lot of them. Wow. And uh, uh, so he sold it, and we we got out of there, and then. Uh, when I come home, I was up there. When did I go in the service, I didn't go. I didn't get in the service till the end of the, almost the end of the war, because they wouldn't. I tried to enlist when I was 18. I just soon get off the damn farm and, <laughs> and uh, go somewhere, but uh, they wouldn't. T they wouldn't let me in because they said you're you, you're a farmer. You stay right. on the farm. Right. The so the minute, minute the war was over, they drafted me. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so away I went, and when I came back. Uh, They'd already sold their equipment and everything, and and he was he bought a place over in Vail because he wanted he'd get tired of the rain here. So when he's all, in fact, he was loaded up with a big truckload. I just got here, but a day or two before they left, and so they moved over there. Colorado. No. Uh, oh, Vail, Oregon. Vail, Oregon. Oh, I'm seeing it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a little irrigated farm over there. Well, how did you manage to get back to McMinnville then? How did I get back here? Yeah, I mean, you, well, you I came didn't go here. with him. No, I don't know. I came home. Oh, you, so you stayed here. here? Yeah. I see. And I uh, see. They'd had a house rented in town. They'd moved to town already. I'm trying to think back what. And my sister, younger sister, was living in that house with them. And uh, she had a cousin that moved up here from California and living there with them. So. I just stayed there for a while, and uh, the hell hours uh, I don't know. When you came back here, then you were out of the service. What would that be? Yeah. About your twenty, twenty-one, something like that. Yeah, because I was about twenty, I guess, before I went in the service. I was about twenty-two. I was so only in the service a couple of years. What did they do for good times then around here? Go to dances, uh, social kinds of things. I didn't get involved much in that stuff. Mm -hmm. Not when I was that age, I was kind of a shy guy. I did you? What, what did you do? Now your dad was gone from here, right? What did yeah. you do for work? Uh, oh, my uh, cousin was getting married to some local boy, but they wanted to go down south to get married to their parents. So I bought an old car, I fixed up a little bit. So I offered to drive him down there. Well, then when I got down there, uh, my uncle that had a big cabinet shop talked me into going to work for him because mm -hmm. he knew I had a carpenter background, you know. Sure. So I worked for him for, uh, no, I'd worked for him before. I worked for him uh, during the war because I was getting sick and tired of, you know, it was the winter time. So we conversed back and forth with others and stuff. So. Uh, then I went down there again before I went in the service and worked for him mm -hmm. for a while. And then my dad wrote and said, you better get back up here, they're going to draft you. I guess, I, I can't remember why, but he talked me into coming back up here. Too late, I was though, up huh? here when I got drafted. And, uh, but when you came back, you went to work for your uncle again. Yeah, I, I went down there and talked me into going back and working for my uncle for... I can't remember how long I worked for him and then... Uh, I got acquainted with a guy that didn't like it down there either, so we came back up here and started a body and fender shop, <laughs> and I didn't know nothing about that. But this kid was really good at that, so uh, I'd just do the masking off in the sand, and, <laughs> and we didn't last too long at that. What happened? To that? I can't remember. That was remember. here in town? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you remember the name of the shop? No, we had no name to it. Oh, oh we went broke. <laughs> That's right. That Because uh, we were doing, we was painting these cars for this. Uh, a used car dealer in town. That, uh, I see. Give, uh, he'd give us thirty dollars for painting this one of his cars. Sure. And uh, then he never paid us for a while, so we went broke. <laughs> I remember Davis and Otto. I was telling that Ron Davis and the kid that owns it now. 
and I was dealing with his grandfather, and uh, he, he let us have $30 credit a, a month. And then when we got to thirty dollars, we had to come down and pay him before we could charge anything more. Sure. I told Ron that here a few years ago, and I said, "Hell, I come in this damn shop now, store now, and it's thirty bucks before I get out of here one time." Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. used to be a whole month's supply of, uh, of stuff for the body shop, you know, for the the paint mainly, paint and sandpaper, but all we got. Now, how old were you then before you got married? I was, uh, let's see, nineteen fifty. We I got married in nineteen fifty. So I probably was, what, 25? And how did you meet your wife? I don't remember. Here in town, some way. Yeah. You weren't much of a social person, so no. you must have met her or some. No, well, I was working, uh, I was working, uh, oh, after we went broke, I was working down at Frederick, which is, uh, well, that's where the news register is downtown now. Mm -hmm. That was this Dodge Plymouth. Is that right? Dodge, Dodge, and, dealership. Dodge and Chrysler dealership. So I was in there trying to act as a body and fender man. <laughs> I didn't know how I was, what I was doing. Anyway, uh, I can't remember how. I, I guess I met her through her sister. A friend of mine was going with her sister, and then we got together. So it was, uh, let's see, it was January, January 21st, 1950. And then. Uh, she said, well, what are you going to do? And, uh, and then I said, well, i got an uncle down there I can go to work for. We'll go to California. So I talked her into going with me. And away we went. We got married before we went. So we went down there, and we lasted, uh, that was 19, I mean, yeah, that'd be 1950. And then uh, uh, four years of that is all she could stand. She hated it down there. The weather never changed, you know, and the smog was bad at that time, really, oh, really? bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the curtains had rot off at the halfway up where the window was open, and uh, we bought a little house down there uh, where we dug the cabinets in it. And uh, so I said, well, let's go back to Oregon. I don't care, get back in, on a farm up there. I, I was still kind of a farm boy, I guess. So we came back up here and bought an old truck and loaded it with what stuff we had. Came back. I'd saved up some money. I had about $10,000 when I came back really? here. Really? You were rich? Well, I was making good money in the cabinet business. Real good money. A lot more than the average person because I was, I was getting paid percentage and piecework, you know. Uh -huh. I got 10% of what we sold. They sell a house for so many dollars uh, for the cabinet work in it, and I got 10% of that for installing them. Wow. And we... Uh, uh, we'd sell, I know there's one track out where we get, they got $400 a house for the cabinets, so I got 40 bucks, and I could put one of those in in a day. So that was good money because the guys in the shop were only making $2 an hour. Mm -hmm. There were $16 a day, the carpenters in there, and I was making 40 And uh, so anyway. So you got married before you went down there? Yeah, we were married when we went down there. And you were married here in town? Yeah. At a church here? Yeah. Uh -huh. What church do you remember? Oh, I don't remember down there. I think it was a Baptist church, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, well, uh, neither one of us were too much. She was raised in pretty religious thing. I, I, my mother always went to church, but she had a hard time getting us boys to go. What we, were the names of your parents? We used to sneak off, and on Sunday coming off, we'd get on our horses and take off down there. and. Uh, Miss Church. Oh no! <laughs> one one time, I know we we went way up. To, we were living next to a big what they called a wash. It was where the water flooded and there all kinds of willows and trees and stuff. So we went way up there and built us a little fire. And my dad came up and found us. He, I said, "How did you find us?" He said, "I saw your smoke." Oh, sure. <laughs> anyway, he made us go to church that day. Uh, uh, she, uh, uh, well, my folks' name. Yeah. Uh, first name. Yeah. Uh, his name was Vernon. And hers was Nina. And what was her maiden name? Brooks. Brooks. And uh, they were from the area here? No, 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 California? no. California. No, no. I guess they were from California. They were from, uh, and I don't know how they got to Colorado, but they lived, were living in Colorado when they were married. So uh, uh, this was about 1923, I think they were married. So I was born in 24, October 24. 
October 20th, actually yesterday was my birthday, uh, they, uh, anyway, oh, my grandpa, uh, he was a spud inspector back there. And my dad was just a kid, you know, and he rode, uh, uh, drove horses, and he had a team of horses and a wagon, and so he'd, he'd haul stuff for people and get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how he met my mother, I don't remember any of that, but I know that th things were tough then, and uh, grandpa got, he just bought a brand new uh, Model T, so uh, he got on a train and went to Los Angeles, they tell, and got a good job out there. So he wrote back and or talked back to him some way. He said, "Come on out of here. It's really good. There's all lots of work." So uh, my dad loaded my mother. Uh, she was the oldest of six girls, and two of the other girls, the younger girls, one of them was married, I guess, and stayed there. Anyway, he had the three g women with him in that Model T, and he drove it to Los Angeles. <laughs> I don't know much about that trip, but it's got to be a lot of gravel road. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hot. They had a big group, a big uh, grub boxes. I saw a picture of the old Model T one time. I don't know where it happened to it, but they had big grub boxes on the on the fender. I don't know where the gas stations were or anything about that, but uh, anyway. I remember we had these uh, canvas water bags, too, they used to hang on the car. I don't remember that, but I know those grub, and they, they camped along the way, and, sure. and then away he went. And, uh, it was quite a trip in those days. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Anyway, they, they made it out to L.A., and he got a job driving a team of wagons delivering milk. He loved them horses. He, he had nothing to do, but he loved horses. That's why he bought us kids ponies. I didn't realize it at the time. I didn't like that damn pony. It always throw me on the ground, you know. <laughs> and uh, But he, he uh, since I was, I don't know, about 12 years old when he bought his pony, but it was for him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and get on there and ride that thing, you know, and do this and, and do that. I remember when I was, uh, uh, I don't remember how old I was, but probably 13 or 14. One Christmas, he bought me a saddle, and he was making $200 a month. He bought me a saddle that cost 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. I still have it. It's a beautiful exactly. saddle. Can't believe it. And I was the only kid that got any uh, Christmas present that year. So I think all the rest of them held it, to, it, held it against me all the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't get nothing. I got me a $60 saddle. Wow. Anyway, uh, and I used it. We used it a lot up there on Peavine. Uh, we had a horse saddled all the time up there. Well, I bought them. you a saddle, but it wasn't for a pony, apparently. It wasn't for a full-size horse, huh? Oh, yeah. Once I got that big, yeah. We had big horses down south. He was just pony. I, I said ponies. They're not. They were fair-sized Mustangs. They were Mustangs in off the range. Yeah, the ones they were just, often, Now they auction them off. Right, they go out to Western Oregon, herd them up, and then... Oh, I know, and they can't do nothing with them. They used to sell them over there to that slaughterhouse in Redmond until the people, PETA people, burn it down. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, a, it was the only bun in... Now there's none around. They just, they can't butcher them anymore. Yeah, they try to get them ripped off, pawned off onto families. Take well, they, them. No, they sell them. But, I mean, they try to yeah, sell them. Yeah, they try to sell them, and I don't know what they do with the ones they can't so sell. Yeah. I'm sure, but you, you sign a paper that you don't have, going to have it butchered or, you know, won't take it to a slaughterhouse or nothing. Yeah, yeah the yeah. French really like it. I, they, I understand the French love horse meat, so they shipped all that meat to, to France when they killed them. Maybe they'll ship the horses there now and they do their own. Yeah, maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know. Are your parents buried in the area? No, not anymore. They did. I mean, were they, no, I say, were they buried here somewhere in a... Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where, what funeral, or what cemetery are they doing? Macy's out there. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're going to, uh, they, they were cremated. I was against that, but I didn't have the whole say. Cremated and put in one of those little cages out there. So when my wife passed away a couple of years ago, I uh, bought what they call a family plot out mm -hmm. there. I think there's 12 sites on there. Now, is this the one by 47 where it turns off? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. The Masonic's on this side, and the, uh, uh, what do they call it, Evergreen? No, I don't know what the, I don't know what the name of that cemetery I, is. I didn't realize there were two of them. Yeah, there's two of them. The 47 divides them. And uh, you have uh, family brothers and sisters, is that right? Yeah. Okay, what? They, uh, let's see, got a younger sister lives in Albany. Uh, 
Then the next one is a boy. He lives in Palm Springs. He lived up here for a while and it's got, he liked hot weather, so the way they went. Uh, and then the next one is, uh, who the hell's the next one in line? I guess another brother that lives in Palm Springs in the wintertime and lives here in the summer. And then a sister is the next one in line, and she's the one that's involved in that museum out there. You'll meet her, I'm sure. And you have children? I got three children. Yeah. And what are they here. about these days? Huh? What are they doing these days? As little as they can, it seems like to me. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's an RN, <laughs> and the other one's an attorney, and the other one's a in the car business. What are their names? Names? Uh-huh. Well, the oldest one is Sheldon, and then uh, the next one is Sharon, mm -hmm. that's the daughter, and the next one is uh, James, he was the, he's the youngest. And they live in the area then, you, you see? Yeah, yeah, well, the oldest one lives here with me in the basement, there's an apartment in the basement of this old house. and. Uh, I just got done building uh, my youngest one, a, a house out there on the golf course, real nice house. And uh, we got a good deal on the lot out there. And then the daughter lives over there in a house at, in, uh, on Wallace Road. Now this is an odd question to ask, but one of the questions they asked me to ask is, have you ever had any major disaster in your family, the death of a family in member? In this family? Or burn the house down, or any kind of major <laughs> yeah. disaster. My mother's house, my mother's had two houses burned down around her, and I had one about four years ago right here. Really? Yeah, burnt the whole roof off of it. This house been completely rebuilt. Wow. And uh, uh, that's the only major disaster. That I know. Is that what you're talking about? I guess so. I, in '62, we had a major disaster in the whole country right here. Yeah, it was, was a windstorm. Columbus Day storm. Yeah. Yeah, Columbus Day storm. What did you folks do for holidays or on weekends like Sundays? Did you get together for any kind of meals? They or? worked. They were farmers. Okay. They never went anything. They never went any place. Yeah, farmers were pretty much tied to the ground, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And more or less anti-social. I remember when I was a kid, down there we always went out to my grandma's one or the other of them because they lived in the area and all the girls would get together and and uh, cook dinner and the us kids would play and the men would go out there and play cards. Mm -hmm. That sounds familiar. Yeah, that's what you, we did. That's all we did. Yeah. So you got together with friends or family members? But all family members. There were six girls and they all had a lot of kids, not a lot of kids. Okay. But, uh, so you didn't have to go outside the family for... No, no, we never went outside the family that I can remember. No, we didn't associate with anybody outside the family. Because that's kind of like my family was. Yeah. You know, if you got together, it was always... They were close-knit back in those days. Yes. Well, you relied on one another. You don't have... Yeah, you don't uh, see that so much anymore. No, well, of course, people... Well, my wife was a great one for having the family members over here. Because uh, you had that big dining room in there, and she'd cook up a, uh, a big meal for... Well, she's uh, gone now. Yeah. How long ago? Uh, let's see, almost two years. Uh-huh. She's out there in the cemetery. Where did she, where did she, uh, was she from this area? You said you met her here. Oh yeah, she, she's the one that's got the history behind her. Really? Because her, she had a great grandmother or something come across on the covered wagon and uh, that was on her mother's side. And her dad was uh, on her dad's side. Uh, he'd been here a long time because we went up and looked up some gravestones up there at uh, I can't remember the name of that town up on the river there. Uh, right across the river from Mount Rainier, St. Helens. St. Helens up in there. Uh -huh. And there, there's, it went way back, 1850. He had a grist mill up there, and then he, or he had a sawmill. He was, these guys were Germans, yeah. and they... Uh, Lumberjacks? No, millwrights more. Oh, millwrights. Okay. They, yeah, they, and uh, so... Uh, and that yeah. that worked its way down. Her dad was a millwright at, at uh, the Newburgh Fulton Mill. Mm -hmm. Her brother was one, and his son was one. So there was one time there was three generations over there at the mill in, uh, in Newburgh. Mm -hmm. So they were all seemed to be mechanically inclined. And uh, anyway, they uh, 
they own his, way back in history, I suppose his dad or her dad or her grandfather or his grandfather, maybe her father or something, owned almost the whole town of uh, St. Helens. And they uh, they would cut firewood for, uh, I remember Lloyd talking, that was her dad's name, Lloyd. And uh, he talked about cutting wood for the steamboats going up and down the river. Really? And uh, he, he was the older one, so he, he uh, let's see, he had to split them. The other kid, the younger brother ran the a drag saw, uh, you know, uh, drag saw is, it's a big saw that goes back and forth with the motor on it. Uh -huh. And uh, they'd cut this stuff off at four foot lengths. And uh, uh, he'd split it, Lloyd had split it. And, uh, and sell it to the river boats. Things about like that, you know, he split them. But these are big trees. Because Lloyd said when they got to the first limb, they quit sawing on it. It probably old growth stuff, see. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. split it up and haul it down there and pile it on the dark, on the dock, and then uh, they sell it to them steamboat guys as they went Sounds along. Sounds like life on the Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, he used to come up and help me. Uh, I, I want to come back up here. I guess I, I don't know. We, we you lost me back there, wasn't it? Uh, when, when did I stop about coming back here? Well, you said you. you came uh, we were down there. Okay, okay, we were down there in four years. Okay. Four years, and then we come up here, and I bought a three hundred. 20 acre farm out of Sheridan. Oh, that's after you went to work for your uncle for a while. Yeah, that four years uh -huh. when I went to, back to work for him. Actually, I, and I ended up buying an interest in the, in the company. Really? So I had a little bit of money when I sold that. And uh, so I bought that acreage out there. I don't know, there wasn't any farmland. I don't know what the hell I was thinking about, but I bought it pretty cheap and there was a lot of, there was a certain amount of timber on it left. There's been a big logger in there taking all the big stuff out. They said, told me there's no timber left. So. But I logged on it for two years, <laughs> sold poles and little stuff, and Lloyd had come up there on his days off and, and helped me. That's when he got to tell me about splitting that wood up there and everything. But I was just cutting little stuff like that, you know, and then poles. Do you remember your first car? Huh? Do you remember your first car? Your first car? First car? No, I always drove the family car, you know. But you we must didn't have one of your own eventually. Well, that wasn't until I got out of the service. Really? Bought a, a Ford. No, the first one I had was a, was a Ford, uh, 1941 Ford, I think. Yeah, that was after the war. After I got home in the service, and bought a car, 1941 Ford. And then, uh, I don't know what happened to that. One of the questions says, if you ever wished you could have spent your life somewhere else other than here, would you have, if you had your choice, would you have lived somewhere else? Well, I can't think of where it'd be. Because yeah. you came back here by choice, right? I stayed, well, not really. It just went, went with the flow, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but after living here all this time, I would never have went anyplace else. Yeah. This is God's country, man. <laughs> you can't beat it. Well, Tell me, you know, look at the weather. It's good weather. Mm -hmm. You got to have put up with a little. We used to fight the rain when we uh, were in construction. Yeah. We didn't have the equipment that they have today. These guys work all winter now, but we didn't have those kind of machines. You can't get out there with a rubber tired yeah. thing. And these guys got those things on you tracks now. And well, it's mud. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. Mud is that deep, and I hated it on the farm oh, yeah. up there because we're just fighting mud all the time out there. Yeah. Now uh, you didn't you didn't keep the cows in, did you? Uh, no, wait a minute. You did. Did you do heavy dairy at all? Did I what? You didn't have any cows, did you? Cows? Dairy cows? Oh, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, we had everything. Okay. When I lived up there, we had 18 cows, and, and uh, I'd milk six, my dad had milk six, and my younger brother had milk six. These are by hand, too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah I never was around a milking machine. And you sold the milk to uh, the cooperative here? Yeah. yeah the truck come, come by right at first. There was no, no milk rod up there. We just uh, had a separator, and we separated the cream, and brought the cream into town once a week. That's uh, what we used to do. Yeah, they sold it for butter. Maybe. You have the hand crank separator? Yeah, hand crank separator. <laughs> and uh, so then the guy got to start a, a, a route because enough people wanted to sell the milk. So uh, he'd come up there and pick up their milk once a day. Anyway, I guess that's, you know, that's the way we made a little spending money to live on and come to town and buy groceries, everything else we had. We had chickens and pigs and, yeah. and uh, 
my dad said during the war that the farmers were the ones who really lived pretty well. Yeah, because yeah. Well, most of the well I know. I, they told me. I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. But after my, I went in the service. My dad started uh, black marketing. I shouldn't say that, maybe, but he did. What the heck? Uh, somebody would sell a half a beef to somebody or something, or a whole one or whatever, butchered. So he'd hollered, Bob, go round up, go round up a critter out there, and he'd take his horse and go get a, bring him, and they'd string him up there in a big oak tree in that yard out there. And, uh, hmm, these farmers and there's town people coming, he had the, it was rations, so they couldn't get very much meat. He had no stickers to get meat, same as gas. And, uh, and sugar and shoes and... Yeah, they'd come out there and get that beef. Well, I don't think it was very good, but it was meat. It wasn't grain fed, I'm sure. They just round up out of the pasture. Yeah. And, uh, Is there anything anyway. you'd rather do, we'd do over if you had a choice? And no, the wife and I talked and we said we, uh, we wouldn't do a thing. She wouldn't do nothing. And uh, I wouldn't do nothing different. We were both happy. We had a good life together. Hmm. And uh, none of this squabbling, fighting, and divorcing like they do now. We didn't think about that kind of stuff. We just times were tough, and I don't know time got better. And then uh, we'll see, 50, 52, 56. Then I come off the farm. We needed to continue on with that, so we can get down to the building. I guess I don't know how much you want to no, How long you want to go? Matter of fact, I'm glad you mentioned that because you you worked on the downtown buildings. Tell me about that. Well, I did work downtown quite a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, remodeled some of them buildings. Uh, that was 56. Because I got done logging and, and uh, done with the trees, it was done to do, so I came to how, uh, town and bought a house, a lot over there in uh, a subdivision and built a, built a house on it. Tried to sell it. It didn't sell, but the people, other people wanted me to build them one, so I built them one. And it just went on from there. So anyway, then uh, we kind of got to uh, the contracting business. Let's see, well, my brother he ran out of work, and he so he come with me, and we we built a house together. And we had another guy come along, and the three of us started a partnership and started doing construction work. And uh, first building we ever, first commercial building we ever built was that Chevrolet garage right here on the end of town, on Third Street. The other end of Third is a Chevrolet garage. Are you talking about 99 or? No, on 3rd Street. Oh, oh or on the bend. Uh, on Chevrolet. Yeah. 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 Chevrolet, Jim right Dorn's, there. Jim uh, Dorn's Chevy dealership there. Huh? Jim Dorn's. He owns the door now. It's Frederick. I built it for Frederick's. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, I can't tell you which jobs were done which, but I built Chevrolet Garage and be 1948. Boy, I'm telling you, it snowed that year. We had 18 inches of snow. And we'd go down there and scrape the snow off the concrete and work in it. <laughs> oh, man, that was miserable. Anyway, uh, we got that thing done finally. And uh, I can't tell you where we went from there, but we ended up doing... Uh, I can't... I just don't know what, who the heck we did after that Chevrolet garage, but... I don't know. I built the Chevrolet garage and then... Uh, Ford garage out there where they are now, Colvin Ford. Mm -hmm. That was about 72, I guess. Well, in the meantime, we'd bought uh, 25 acres out here where we got our, built a mobile home park on the west end of 2nd Street out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this, that was bought that from the posse ground, so the sheriff's posse. It'd been on showdio grounds and racetrack and stuff out there. And out here on the end of Second Street. Well, it's not on the end. It's out there on seven tenths of a mile from downtown. Oh. It's out there on the right. Can't miss it. Squires Estates, it's called. Okay. Big yeah, big, big mobile okay. home park. Gotcha. So, uh, so we, wor we worked on that over the years, then. huh? That was open just parade ground, kind of, huh? For the sheriff? Everything out there was, there was nothing out there. No the houses or anything. Is that for uh, the parade ground, for the posse? Yeah, I, I don't know what they did, 
before. I remember as a kid, I went out there a time or two. They had car races, out, jalopy, jalopy races around on the track. They had a track out there and some bleachers and some lights up. Hmm. And uh, that was a lot of that stuff was still there when we bought the land. And we tore that all down and mm -hmm. built streets in there and rented out those spots. We tried to sell them originally, but they wouldn't sell. That's 1965. Nobody financed them for them. They couldn't get a, any financing on them. So we started renting them and. Thank God we didn't sell it at that time because we we sold one for two thousand dollars, <laughs> and they're worth a hell of a lot more than that now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, getting back to the buildings, somehow or another, over the course of time, and I can't remember what you know where I went, which, which job was mm -hmm. which. Uh, I just know that when we. The first big commercial building we'd built was the Chevrolet Garage, and that was a big one. The first tilt up that was ever built in this town. We exactly. built it. Boy, everybody was scared to death of that stuff, you know. Because you put parting compound on the, on the, you pour the floor, and then you put, I don't know how from any yard, but you pour, spray it with this parting compound, and then you, you pour the walls right on top of the floor with the big pickups in them, and then you mm -hmm. pick them up. And uh, we built a lot of those. I like that building. That makes a nice building. Now they're going heavy to metal buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, what else did you build then after that? I still trying to think. I don't know which one is next. Were they downtown on Third Street? Any buildings on Third Street? Well, yeah, I remodeled the union, what they call the Union Block down there. Yeah. And at the same time as they were uh, tearing down the First National Bank, which is Key Bank now, mm -hmm. they demolished that. And uh, because I know that engineer was down there, and I was going over things with him. Because when I opened that front of that building up, why well, it wasn't very well built, so I called him up. I said, "Hey, you got to come down here, and take a look at this building. It's not going to stand up. We got to do something with it." And, uh, and this is from a guy who has no college or high school education, even and has learned his trade on the job. Yeah. And you're down there. Uh, yeah. And uh, well, I could tell then, and anybody with any sense, because they were over there with a big ball knocking that other building down. And, we were shaking the heck out of where I was, and uh, so I said, "We got to get something done here." So he figured out what I need to do, and uh, and then uh, I didn't have anything to do with that building. Uh, the remodeled the Union Block, and uh, and I helped them tear down the which is uh, U.S. Bank. Now they tore that down the following year. We had a little crane at the time, a little construction crane, so we did some. Uh, Demolition work on that. Uh, I remodeled uh, that building uh, where the news register is now. Mm -hmm. That was a, a dealership. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a dealership. It was a. It had been sold as a, because that that was where the Chevrolet dealer was. Right. No, Chevrolet dealer was down here. When I built that new building out there for Fredericks, I guess he just got the Chevrolet dealership. Because then they moved out there. So then uh, Hewlett Packard, Hewlett Packard? No, Field Emission. It was an outfit here that was the forerunner of mm -hmm. Hewlett Packard and started at the college. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were in there making stuff like crazy. Is that right? Now that, where the new register is now? Yeah. So when they moved out, because they built that new building over there in Linfield, they moved out and they had me in there to remodel that thing. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't many new buildings being built on on uh, Third Street. The only two that I can remember during my time here as a contractor was the two banks. There's the only new buildings. Mm -hmm. Well, I take it back. I built a uh, I built a new building. If you want to call it a new building, it was uh, it was the last wood building on on Third Street, and it was where Timmick and McNichol is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all we did to build that building was tear that old building, old wood building down and put a new front, new masonry front on it and a new masonry back because they used the two walls, the neighbor's walls on each side <laughs> to put the roof on, to hold the roof. So uh, that, a was, money there. that was done for Wally Wright. And, uh, was uh, Taylor Dale there then? Probably was. Oh yeah, Taylor Dale was built back and way back. Yeah. And they were still working hardware for you folks then, I suppose. Oh, well, we bought a lot of hardware from them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the basement 
they got pictures of that basement being dug with horses. So it was done back in the 20s. Yeah. When we first came here, they were still a hardware. But, of course, not hardly anyone was going there. No, well, they weren't competitive right there. But, uh, the kid it was, was probably, a fun place because it was like was the probably, ones that I remember going oh, through. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's an old-fashioned stuff. They had all kinds of... If you ever got down that basement, there was all kinds of stuff left over from, I mean, way, way back. Yeah. Oh, I remodeled a Ford, Ford garage uptown, which is now a church, right across from the post office. Yes. And uh, I know that uh, we were up in there cleaning up, and there was an old Model T fenders up in there and all kinds of stuff up in the storage room on the second floor. Wow. <laughs> so I don't know what happened to that. Spare parts, huh? It worth a lot of money probably at the time. Can't remember when that was, but we remodeled that a couple times. Got new doors in it for them and changed stuff around. And uh, uh, Now, were you strictly word of mouth, I guess, huh? Just people knew you were a builder and... I was the only one in town for quite a while there that would that built commercial buildings. Mm -hmm. Merle Dix was the leading builder when I started and uh, for houses, but he wouldn't do any any houses particularly. Well, even before him was a guy by the name of Cleet Gill, the guy that built this house. Mm -hmm. And he, no, he started, he started in as a worker in 36, 30, 1936 he worked on the original hospital, which is now uh, Walgreens is? No, 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 it was before that. It was uh, the one uptown there that, uh, 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 county owns the new new part, the new section, and uh, the other section is... Oh, the Physician Medical Center you're talking about? It was the old Physician Medical Center. Before no, was that they, was a hospital then at one time? Yeah, that was a, well that's where my wife was working when I oh, married really? her. Yeah. Okay. She was working in there as a nurse okay. in uh, 1950. Well, when was the uh, old hospital, but the one after the Physician Medical Center, when was that built, Dr. by Linfield? I think that was older maybe than that one. That was a wood building originally. Yeah, that was, a, that was, a, yeah, that was, it must have been an older hospital. I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Because yeah. I was just a kid, I wasn't paying attention to that sure. stuff. But I knew that was a hospital because my wife worked in the, in the up front, and, and she told that doctor that uh, she was going to get married and leave. Oh, he was uh, <laughs> the guy that owned it was uh, uh, well, I guess his dad had built it. Yeah, it was Wel Weldon Ross's. Uh, no, it was Weldon. How the hell are they connected? The ne next door neighbor used to be a, a guy by the name of Dr. Ross. And his sister, okay, his sister was married to Dr. Manning that owned that hospital. And because uh, his dad had built it for him, old Homer Ross had built that hospital. And the guy that built his house worked up there as a carpenter in 1936 when they built that. Nice. He built this. Uh, Cleet Gill built both of these houses. And I got acquainted with him after I bought this house because he lived in my trailer park in one of those trailers <laughs> out there. Right? Small world, man. Yeah. You knew everybody. You just walked down 3rd Street and you could know everybody you came to just about. Well, what Not did anymore. Street end when you first came here? Well, it was gravel out to the... I think it went on as a county road. I think it was a county road on out. Uh, but like uh, Michael Book, was it, uh, must have been past Michael Book, because that's where your, your uh, uh, home Oh, yeah, well, I think it went clear, well, I know it went clear on out on the hill. To hill clear road? Clear on the way up and beyond, because the old, what they called the uh, poor farm, mm -hmm. was a great big building on uh, way up on top of that hill. But the city uh, itself didn't go out but no. to, to where? No, this, we were in the county when we developed that. And really? Then we, your mobile park there? Yeah, we annexed it to Is the right? county to the city by hook or crook. It was legal, but we did it. <laughs> We've developed, we made all those lots and then we deeded out six of them. It, it took so many, in order to get into the city, you had to have so much land along the front, it only had to be 200 feet deep. And you had to have, I don't know, two thirds of the property owners, two thirds of the land area, and two thirds of something else. 
So we, with Annex. yeah, and then so we applied to be Annex. So the guys that uh, and Waldo Farnham was involved in that one. There was about ten guys on the old poor farm, way up on the hill there. Where let's see, it backed up to the Masonic Cemetery. No, not in. Is that the Masonic? No, not up on that. Yeah, that's a Masonic Cemetery up on the hill. You ever been up there? Mm -hmm. I've been way back up with the building now, but I didn't know that there was a cemetery. Well, the cemetery is up across from the hillside, isn't it? You go straight off yeah. the hillside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. you can't get in that way. You got to go no, you through that go development. Inside and then back it used to be again. right yeah. there. So this, uh, all that development that you see on the other side of the hill road was, was what they call the old poor farm, and these, these ten, ten local businessmen bought into it. I know that Waldo was one of them. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that owns Farnham Electric. I don't know who the rest of them were, but they went on with it. So you had a, a, a two foot wide, two hundred foot wide strip on the north, north side of Second, that started at the city limits, and I don't remember exactly where they were probably right in there about where the school is now, mm -hmm. that went clear up on that hill and included all their, their land. So it was a queer, you look at an old map of McMinnville, you'll see, here's a little town of McMinnville, and then, then here's this long strip <laughs> goes way up there, and then this piece of 25 acres that we had there. A little political maneuvering there. Yeah, well, you know, it was good for the city, but we couldn't get water unless we was annexed to the city. Sure. And uh, so then we built those city streets in there. My park's a little different. It's not really a park. It's a subdivision. Uh, the, those are city streets in, in my mobile home. I don't know if you've ever been through there, but... Yes, I go through there once in a while. It's city. It's, those are city streets mm -hmm. maintained by the city. Mm -hmm. Do you still own that area? Huh? Uh, do you still own that property? Yeah, I own the lots. I don't own the streets. I never did own right. the streets. Well, I mean, we dedicated the streets to the city and paved them at our expense. And, uh, but then you still the own the, the lots there? I own right? all the lots. I own... And, uh, a uh, half of them. Mm -hmm. We split it right down the middle because uh, when our we went out of business, retired in 1977. Uh, our manager just passed away, I guess. We had a manager out there when we were in business. We didn't have time to manage it. Yeah. And then uh, we split it right down the middle because why? Oh. Bob wanted to keep, my brother wanted to keep the manager's wife there to manage it. And I wanted to manage my own, so we split it down the middle and we went that route. And then she died. <laughs> so then he had to hire another man. Or I guess he managed it himself for a while, and then he moved to Palm Springs in the wintertime and hired a management firm. And I still manage my half. So I own half of it. And, uh, well, I'm about out of tape here, so I guess we're going to have to cut it off. Are we? <laughs>